What is going on guys, it is DMG here, and today I am going to bring you arguably the best attacking formation in all of FIFA 22. If you want to actually have fun playing FIFA 22 with players who are actually moving around, making certain runs, not just staying in one spot, but they're going left, right, up and down, doing all of these fantastic things, then I really, really urge you to, to at least try this formation before we get into it i want to show you my team so you know i'm not using like the most meta players of all time this is obviously not the best team ever it has those efl cards and obviously tavernier as well it has a senho and goal it has gold marcos llorente it obviously has some good players in here like pk like mendy you could argue carrasco uh, the japanese guys right these are obviously some good players but they're not the most overpowered players in general and this team has actually been helping me grind my way through division one into the upper echelons of division rivals and again it's not because of the players i use it's not because i'm using the most overpowered tactics imaginable it's because i'm having fun while doing it but i've also found again one of the more fun attacking formations so before we get into it make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already without further ado let's actually get in to the nitty gritty here so the formation in question is the three four two one i know we've done a lot of three at the back formations but it's because for a good reason right these formations are a lot of fun to play with because you get a lot more attacking uh prowess in here because you don't have a fourth defender right you're getting a lot more players forward which is very very fun now the reason why this formation is so good attacking wise is because you essentially have three players that are always forward very similar to a four three two one in this case you're going to have a left forward a right forward and a striker who again are always going to be attacking for you but what this formation does a little bit different is you have left and right mids instead of left and right back so they are going to be further up the field for you automatically which adds another element of at attack for you because they're going to be adding width so like we do with every single formations video we'll talk about the tactics the instructions the type of players that you're going to want and then of course show you some gameplay highlighting the very specific things that i really want Want you guys to focus in on in this formation so without further ado let's start with the tactics so before jumping in i do want to mention that contrary to previous tactics and instructions videos the tactics in this case are actually something that i do recommend that you follow pretty strongly and in other ones i've mentioned that the tactics aren't really as important as the instructions while in this one i do think that they are so make sure to really pay close attention to honestly everything in this video so starting off with the defense we have the defensive style on balance the width at 45 and the depth is at 80 so it is very very high now the width you could probably switch here and there i just prefer it at 45 that's kind of just my default at this moment but for the defensive style and the depth i do recommend having it on those two at least the depth around 80. now for the defensive style we have it on balance because if it's on pressure on heavy touch or any type of pressing thing you know we have only three players back right we don't have any defensive mids we don't have any left and right backs we only have three players back so if we do any type of pressing and you know we maybe get caught out we are going to be screwed because if they have anything more than three attackers we're going to be outnumbered so it's best to just go on balanced here now for the depth at 80 we go a little bit more in depth to this during the instructions but essentially this is to help stop the counter attack and again we'll go more in depth as to why we have it so high with the instructions now for the build up play and chains creation i would really really recommend this on balance because that is going to give the most fluidity in this formation if you have the chains creation on let's say possession that means there's not going to be enough plea uh, enough people pressing that back line like we would want in a you know three attacking three attacking player system whereas in you know if we have forward runs direct passing anything that is pressing the back line constantly that means that's going to go against one of the instructions that we have on one of our attackers so again you want it on balance because it creates this fluidity creates this movement where players are moving all around left and right and again that's going to be best for us in this scenario and virtually that's going to be the same thing for our build-up play as well we don't want to rely heavily on two uh, on a specific thing like slow build-up play or fast build-up play we just want them to play their natural game for the width at 60 again we'll go more in depth as to why we have it here but essentially we already have you know three players in the attack that are very close to each other essentially they're all strikers so they're going to be in close proximity to each other we want them to be a little bit more wide so then they're not running into each other for players in the box we have it at six 
Olympics, which at this point is pretty much my default as well. Again, we want them to be, you know, this is an attacking formation, right? We want them to be in the attack. We want to be scoring goals. And so if you have it at four or three, that means there's not going to be enough players in the box to actually create what we want. I know I didn't go into a lot of detail there in terms of the tactics, but I promise it will make a lot more sense once we talk about the instructions, which we're going to get into right now. So starting off with the defense, we actually have our central center back on step up while we have the two other center backs just on their default positioning for everything. Now, the reason why we have uh, PK specifically as the player on step up, it just makes sense because he is the best defender. He has high medium work rates and he's also the tallest at 6'4". So at least it makes sense to have him specifically in that spot. Now, as to why we have a center back in general, on step up it's because of the depth is at 80 and we want to help stop the counter attack so if we have our depth at 80 that means our defenders are going to be a little bit closer to our midfielders i don't want this huge gap between the defense and the midfield because one that's not going to help us during a counter attack and two we also don't have any defensive mids there's no one covering that gap there so in order to help prevent that we have our depth again is at 80 and then one of our center backs specifically our central one on step up for the two center mids we have them both on stay back while attacking and cover center now that may seem a little bit defensive however again they are center mids they still get forward from time to time both of our center mids here also have high attacking work rates that doesn't mean they're just going to sit back and play defensive mid again their natural position is a center mid they do get forward and they do get back so in this case just having them stay back while attacking is also a little bit easier because then you could also just send them forward on a run if you ever want them to for the left and right mids we have them both on comeback on defense and cut inside like i mentioned uh for the tactics we have the width at 60 to help prevent the, any clusters from our three attackers and the middle but that means we also don't want our left and right mids stranded out on the touch line right we don't want them to be constantly out on the wings we want them to also be involved in the attack so that's why even though the width is at 60 we want them cutting inside so then they can help support the attack as well and then finally for our forwards we have our left forward and our right forward both on get in behind and on stay forward but then our central striker is going to be on stay central and target man now for your central striker you could have it on target man or you could have it at the default mixed attack it's just kind of up to you in this case nakamura uh you know he has high low work rates i prefer him at target man so then he's not just making all of these runs forward constantly i do want him to kind of you know help out the, the the midfield a little bit and kind of come back so then let's say i do have the ball with one of our center mids that means our you know one of our forwards specifically our central striker here can drop in and receive the ball almost like a center forward or almost like a center attacking mid however it still means that that even though you know they are on target man they're still a striker they do make runs in behind now again depending on the work rates of the player or just the player in of himself you can switch between target man and mixed attack you just have to go into you know and go into the game try out a few games on both and see which one is just a little bit better and also don't be afraid to switch it from mixed attack to target man or vice versa in game as well because i myself have had to do that multiple times next up we have the types of players that you're going to want in every single position now for the center back starting out these guys essentially have to be kind of like the modern center back they obviously have to be a little bit faster and they have to be good on the ball or at least have a decent weak foot so in this case for Mendy, obviously he's good on the ball he obviously has a five-star weak foot and believe it or not he's also fairly fast gerard pk he is also fairly fast he's a great defender but he's also good on the ball and he is actually pretty good at passing as well same thing for ben davies he's maybe not the best at passing but he at least is good on the ball so then if i need to i can stop and get it on his left foot for a decent enough pass for the center mids these guys just need to be box to box and good at everything virtually right so josh lauren here yeah he can go forward he can also go back he has high high work rates that is just perfect in this spot uh someone like fofana would obviously be a very good uh, a very good person in this position but marcos llorente i think is good enough because even though he has high medium work rates he is just fast enough right he has 88 pace he can run around the midfield he should be good enough i would also recommend these two players to have some sort of pace boost on them to be around 90 pace because again these guys are the only two players in the center of the field there's no center attacking 
attacking mid. There's no defensive mid. There's only two of them. They are going to be running around constantly. So yeah, they also need, you know, good stamina, good, good work rates as well, but also they have to be fast so then they can get to the spot they need to in a good amount of time. For the left and right mids, they essentially have to be pretty similar to the center mids as in, you know, kind of good at everything. So Tavernier is also, you know, a very good player in this spot. He could also play in the midfield, but you know, on the wing, he's fast. He can go forward. He has decent enough shooting. He's good enough, you know, passing and dribbling. He can obviously defend as well. Now you can also have an emphasis on the attack. So Barku's in here. Yes, he has good stamina. Uh, and yes, he's good at attacking, but his defending is not great. Now I haven't noticed that as a huge problem. However, usually at halftime, I do take Carrasco, for example, put him in that spot and then put someone else in that right forward spot. So then Carrasco is the one running up and down the wings, which at high, high work rates is perfect. And then finally for your forwards here, you essentially want all of them to be kind of good at everything because they will be swapping around a lot. They will go from, you know, left forward to right forward, striker to left and right forward, and they'll just kind of switch around a lot. So yes, you do want some players, you know, kind of good at passing, shooting, dribbling, all of that good stuff, but also it's preferable to have them get very good attack positioning. So King Kazu, for example, he has 99 attack positioning with his hunter. He is a blessing in this attack because he is constantly open looking for areas to exploit and he is almost always open. If you can find someone with good attack positioning in all three of those spots like King Kazu, you're going to have a wonderful time attacking in this formation. Lastly, I'm going to show you guys some gameplay here and specifically I want to highlight a couple of things. One, as to what you really want to do when you are getting counterattacked and basically showing why we have one of our center backs on step up. I also want to highlight the fluidity in our attack and why we just have it one on balanced attack just for virtually everything, but also as to why you want really good attack positioning players. But along with that, I also want to show you some negatives about this formation and something to look out for. So let's start with what we want to look for in the defense and when we're getting counterattacked. So in this clip, I want to show you why we have one of our center backs on step up, specifically our center one as well. This is because we want to stop the counterattack. And again, we don't have any defense mids. We don't have any left and right backs. We only have three true out and out defenders that are constantly going to be sitting back. So we can get counterattacked fairly easily and if it does happen it can be a problem so in this case we lose the ball here and again we try to uh, we try to press with our forwards which can happen it's going to be good uh, unfortunately we don't get uh, our attack here we don't get our press with our one of our center mids and already they're already through and this is where we want our center back or specifically pk in this case to be stepping up so in this case we switch to pk automatically and we want to apply pressure so again in this case we choose pk here he's going to be the one applying pressure if we win it that's great if we don't that's okay it's all about stopping the counterattack. so we'll continue to play the clip here and as you can see right we just keep pressing we keep pressing we keep pressing keep going keep going keep going and we don't win it but that's okay because Thank you for the sub, uh, Shane GTFC32. <laughs> Even though we didn't win the ball with PK, we did exactly what we wanted to do. We allowed time for our players to get back and help us defend. And now, essentially, it's looking like a 4-2-3-1, as you can see here, right? Because our left and right mids are essentially playing as left and right backs. And then our two center mids here are essentially acting as our two defensive mids. And so we did exactly what we were supposed to do, which is why, again, we have our center back, our, again, our central center back, on step up and why our depth is also so high. Next up, I want to show you a clip of fluid movement. This is why we have our all of our uh, attacking things, all of our attacking tactics on balanced here. So he has everyone back. We did not uh, get ourselves into a spot where we could, you know, counterattack. That's okay. So we have Nakamura here. He's going to be the one on target man. He's kind of dropping back to receive the ball. That means one of their defenders, whoever it may be, or a defensive mid, is going to go and pressure him. You know, look again at some of our other players here. Even though King Kazu has high low work rates, he's on getting behind, he's on stay forward. He's kind of dropping in a little bit to provide a little bit of, of some space. Again, this is what 99 attack positioning is going to do for you. Along with that, we also have players making runs forward. You can see Carrasco is about to make a run this way, right? So even though we have players with certain instructions on, it's still a balanced attack. We have players dropping in, we have players pressing the back line. It's not all the players pressing the back line. It's not all of the players dropping in to receive the pass. There's some, you know, there's some, there's some differences there.
there, which is good, right? There's some fluidity, there's some differences which allow us to, again, essentially score the goal here. We get the ball to King Kazu, even though he is getting behind, stay forward, all of that stuff. We get him the ball, and then King, uh, and then Nakamura here, even though with his 80 attack positioning, he makes a great run. Even though he's on, uh, he's on uh, target man, stay central, he switches spots with Carrasco here right? He's going to play right forward. This is where that fluidity is coming in, that balanced attack. And so we get the ball to Nakamura here. Now, I thought Carrasco was going to go back post. It is, in general, a lucky goal. It is. I'm not going to lie. But it's that movement here, right? So again, watch Nakamura. He makes that great run in behind. I thought Carrasco here is going to go back post, which is going to be wide open anyway. Uh, again, we do get a little lucky here. But again, it's getting to that spot that's going to allow you to score goals. Again, I want to show you another fluid attack. Now, keep an eye on King Kazu here, right? Number eight. He, again, keep in mind his instructions. Get forward. He's on uh, stay forward. He's playing left forward. He's playing like left striker, essentially. Look where he ends up. All right. So we have the ball with Nakamura. We get the ball to Yorente here. We're trying to get forward, trying to get forward. Look at this run from King Kazu. He's on stay forward. He's on getting behind. He's playing left forward, right? But this is what the 99 attack positioning does. And this is what the balanced attacking uh, tactics does as well. He's not just inclined to sit in this one spot, right? He goes from left forward. Uh, Nakamura, again, even though he's on target man, he's making a run in. Uh, King Kazu he sees that he's making this run. He's dragging this defender here to this spot. If this defender doesn't run there, Nakamura, I can slip in behind. Whereas King Kazu makes this run in behind here. I mean, genuinely, this is one of the better uh, just positioning moves that I've seen in all of FIFA 22. So again, he makes this little looping run. Yorente, it's an easy enough pass and it's just a tap in. So lastly, I do want to point out something negative about this formation. I mentioned with the attackers, how they basically all switch around positions a lot, right? The left forward, King Kazu can go play right forward, which that's good, right? We want that fluid attack. In the defense, pretty much the same thing happens. Even though PK is playing central center back, he can go play left or right center back. Ben Davies, he's playing right center back. He can go play on the left, you know? So they switch around a lot, which isn't always a bad thing. However, in some cases, it is. So in this case, this is where it can be something that's negative, something you have to look out for here. Mendy here was going to go cover this run, and now he's not. So now I have to go cover this run. And so, okay, that's fine. Now he's covering here. PK is now covering this spot right here. Uh, ben Davies has to go mark this spot. And so essentially, they're kind of all jumbled together. They're all standing very close together. And as we all know, player switching in general is just not very good, especially this year. It's, it's probably arguably the worst it's ever been. And so because of that, I get confused about who I'm trying to switch to, who I want to switch to, who the game actually switches me to, and that, you know, that just allows a wide open goal to Nkunku for my opponent. And so the best thing to do in this case is to just essentially choose one defender and just you know, run back with them, right? Just to cover. Because otherwise, something like this could happen where you're getting all mixed up, where the players are on the same spot and it's hard to switch to who you want, and then you could potentially concede. So in this case, choose one defender, keep yourself calm, don't panic like I did, and just drop back. So that is going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully it does help you try to attack more, score more goals, or at the very least, have more fun in FIFA 22. So like I said, that is going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been DMG. Peace.